My research uh, in this field started with the multiple sclerosis. So uh, for many years back is a kind of 20 years of research. Uh, uh, we have been first uh, group providing evidence of existence of intestinal inflammation and increased intestinal permeability, the so-called leaky gut syndrome, in animals with multiple sclerosis. So uh, we have been very excited that we have shown actually pathological changes in different segments of the small intestine, uh, very similar to the Crohn's disease or ulcerous colitis. So a clear infiltration of the um, cells of the immune system uh, and, and clear increased levels of the inflammatory cytokines uh, and at the same time uh, a clear indication of the increased intestinal permeability which started in fact before the clinical symptoms of uh, the, basically in the animals we have symptoms of paralysis which we measure after induction of the disease. So we have seen that the leakage in the gut starts before clinical symptoms which is quite interesting. So we have done additional study where we transferred autoreactive T cells, T lymphocytes, in order to induce the disease. So basically myelin reactive T lymphocytes. Myelin is highly involved in the multiple sclerosis where there is an inflammation around the myelin. So, so by injecting myelin responsive T lymphocytes, we also have seen leakage in the gut. So our hypothesis were, is, uh, was and still is that autoimmune reactions, especially in the disease of MS, might trigger by unknown reasons. Nobody really knows why. But once they um, involve the gut, then perhaps an acute inflammation develop toward a chronic inflammation, which is much more difficult to get rid of. So there will be a huge burden for the body. But solution. Um, uh, as a scientist and also uh, the, the foundation of the company Immune Biotech uh, has been to finding a solution. And the solution was trying to resembling a product development like a classical pharmaceutical compounds. So I have a background from pharmaceutical company in, in Sweden. So learning from there, I tried to adjust it and by uh, creating a huge library of a healthy probiotic lactobacillus. Uh, so basically, a diverse library allowing us to choose for a specific properties of interest. Because I think there is a general understanding that probiotics, all kinds of, are good for health. But that's not true. It depends. So it depends on what kind of properties you are interested. Some strains are, um, are of the lactobacillus, they are pro-inflammatory. They're triggering inflammation, activating the immune system. Some are anti-inflammatory. So basically they're activating the anti-inflammatory T lymphocytes and cytokine releases. So it's really important to choose the strains for a purpose. So having that in our mind, we started by collecting a huge amount of the lactobacillus from food and fermented food, traditional healthy food, and identifying uh, all kinds of uh, properties that we could do. And in, in parallel, we have established uh, a very advanced screening platform, screening for antibacterial properties, screening for immunomodulatory properties, screening for an impact on intestinal barrier function, the integrity, if you can restore the leaky gut syndrome, et cetera, et cetera. So, we have uh, gained a lot of uh, interest from clinicians, in, in, in particular in Sweden, and we have received an invitation to develop a product for IBS initially, irritable bowel syndrome. IBS, uh, what is known today, is also a disease of the gut-brain axis, so involving the changes of the microbiota and impact on the co cognitive health. So having this in mind, we have developed a product for irritable bowel syndrome, and, and with some clinical work, we have shown the proof of concept in patients. In a later stage, we received another invitation from clinicians at Karolinska Institute to test our product in patients suffering from a neurological condition called myalgic encephalomyelitis, or another name is post-viral fatigue. These patients are suffering hugely uh, of uh, fatigue, of pain, chronic pain, uh, and a lot of other complications, the, the brain fog, cognitive issues, and a lot of them cannot really work, cannot really have a private life. It is a great burden, and the, the incidence is increasing, mostly women, young girl. So there are 
a lot of similarities between this disease to multiple sclerosis regarding the inflammation and, and even involvement of the gut where it has been shown that a great majority, almost 70, 80% of these patients also suffer from gastrointestinal issues and, and IBS symptoms. So we have received an invitation and we have started and performed already a very uh, uh, huge clinical study, uh, um, um, randomized double blind placebo controlled study um, uh, involving approximately 90 patients. So uh, the study has been finalized. The results are tremendous. I had just had the pleasure uh, uh, presenting the results in, in, in recent conferences, and especially today uh, at the microbiome meeting in, in London, uh, where we have seen significant improvement of the neurological symptoms in these patients, as well as improvement of the IBS symptoms. We are extremely happy and the manuscript is in preparation. We have learned a lot about the mechanism, how we really can design a product for a purpose and, and the learnings from these studies are going to help us for a next step where we are interested to develop a, a new product uh, in, uh, for patients suffering from multiple sclerosis. There are increasing evidence that the MS patients are uh, suffering from the dysbiosis of the guts, leaky gut syndrome, uh, and the, the gut-brain axis is highly, highly involved and important. Um, so, and having this in mind, uh, our aim is to develop a complete new product. And for that purpose, our IBS product has been launched to the market as a food supplement. It has been existing and we made it available for everybody uh, of interest. But for this particular product, we aim to collaborate with the pharmaceutical companies. So basically the product will be developed as a part of our program called Companion Probiotics, where we design a product to be used in combination with existing drugs in the market to improve the efficacy or perhaps to suppress the non-wanted uh, non side effects. And uh, if the, the results are, are hopeful, we certainly open for collaborations and hope for, for interactions with the interested pharmaceutical companies.